the best thing about making versus videos is that you can create a dichotomy and that can make things a lot more simple give you a bit of a distinction it's sometimes you create a lot of false dichotomies a dichotomy of two choices that are both bullshit that's not what I want to do here this is an imperfect dichotomy but it's something that I've been thinking about for a while and these are two this is definitely an imperfect dichotomy because it's two sides that in general suck in different and similar ways but there is a distinction when I think about the social media personality versus the institutional thinker I didn't want to say institutional personality since that comes off as fake but both are fake it's just institutional guys treated with this ignore delusion thing what I mean is usually the university thinkers that we worship a lot or the politicians anybody else that operates on these institutions that we worship now because we don't have religion anymore a lot of these little fuckheads and then there's the social media guy the social media guy probably being the guy that's popular through television the internet or well, actually, those are the main two. I don't see a lot of personalities or thinkers from other forms of live-action fiction. I don't see any movie stars that present. Oh, well, you get the picture. So you got social media, and you got the institutional fuckheads. And I realize that when looking at a lot of YouTubers I deal with or things of this nature where there's somebody that's speaking a lot about their political views freely and openly, their expressions tend to vary based on which side they favor, the institution or the social media platforming. And I find that the social media personality is a little bit more colorful I definitely see that Obama and Ron Paul ironically both have different ways of expressing how they reach out to the internet with Obama making a bunch of shit memes that we oftentimes parody like the hope and change bullshit the Ford thing we got the funny hat to satirize that the Soviet one the furry one and that that's getting really popular in the manosphere for some reason well it is giving somebody money probably a good guy money I've noticed that a lot of people are tossing out their hats for some change recently it happens you wanna make a living doing something and the internet is a very volatile place but it's a place nonetheless to receive money. <sighs> and they're definitely different from, let's say, a Mises Institute or Noam Chomsky esque university fuckhead who relies on and favors upon that platforming. I mean, I haven't. I mean, people have been mentioning Chomsky and, as a regular thing in movies since the 1990s, at least. Since I did see one movie where they mentioned manufacturing consent from Noam Chomsky, and it was a weird... It's one of those weird Oscar bait movies. But it was based on a true story, I guess. Can't quote me on any of this shit. But anyway, the social media personalities tend to be a lot more assorted, a lot more colorful. Certainly, 
there are people that transcend through both. You definitely see a lot of politicians that have done the social media game recently, but they were very institutionalized and focused on that in the beginning. Obama definitely relied upon a lot of institutions. He had been to Ivy League schools, I believe, and Ivy League universities. And he's joined a lot of organizations such as ACORN, amongst a few other, amongst some pro-black organizations that operate on activism or a lot more ways of obtaining power. But the social personality thing is a little different in terms of you're not just talking to a bunch of college fucks that are running the bureaucracy. You're also speaking directly to the masses. It's a lot harder to speak to the masses now since a lot more is distracting them. Television has become a lot more varied, especially after we're during the 80s television. It wasn't just regional shit. You would be able to watch television shows from across the nation or even further. It's a lot more efficient for that kind of television. And then you started to get to see more channels during the 90s. And the later portion of, actually no, or even the early portion of the 2000s, we've been seeing the same, like, we've been seeing... That since digital television, there's one thousand, there's thousands of channels you can look at, but of course because we have so much overwhelming choice, a lot of those channels seem to be variations of different ones. There was a few renditions of Cartoon Network that I used to watch a lot as a kid since I loved cartoons. Uh, a lot of different forms of Nick, live action Nick, the cartoon Nick, and old school Nickelodeon shows were all got their own channel. Disney's has a bunch of different channels. They had Jetix, which is now Disney XD, or maybe it was always Disney XD. They have the live action Disney channels and some of the cartoons and this other one. I don't know if they have a third one. Cartoon Network also had Boomerang. I think they have a second Cartoon Network channel. I'm not really sure. But as you can see, Oh, and there's there's the one with the what was it the end? It has the grassy Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Malcolm in the Middle, and uh, oh, you see, there's an abundance of channels you could watch. I'm just focusing on what I know. So it's a lot harder to reach people through social media from the television standpoint but from the internet standpoint we use a lot of different distractions that are ultimately the same thing a lot of people have Facebook accounts Facebook probably beat MySpace because a lot of politicians know how to use Facebook to their advantage a lot of businesses can efficiently plug Facebook to their advantage what I liked about MySpace is that you can have your own layout for your own channel, but that kind of made it a disadvantage. It just slowed shit down. You could get a lot of viruses from that. And ultimately, when everything's more uniform, people can flow more efficiently through it. That's why I think Facebook was able to beat MySpace. It created new disadvantages, though, because... Again, less creativity. I don't get to put my own music playlist on Facebook along with my favorite shows and stuff like that. I still use MySpace. But that's because a lot of the stuff that's in MySpace, a lot of the TV and things like that, they don't delete it in MySpace. So I get to see a lot of awesome anime shows or music that... It doesn't have it all. It's not like... It's not like LimeWire plus Hulu.
but it's definitely got a good abundance. And I can always find something I've been searching for for quite a while that I may not be able to find on YouTube. But again, that's my thinking brain. So you can plug yourself directly into the masses through social media. And social media personalities are really good at it. Hell, you won't be seeing Alex Jones or Stephen Molyneux in a college, university, Ivy League school talking about how his views affect the world or things of this nature. But you'll definitely get to see him rally up a bunch of guys on Facebook and YouTube for a little show wherever the fuck he wants to go. It's possible. And it's been done before. These social personalities have more freedom to say whatever the hell they want. Because there isn't this degree of professionalism that you would have in this institution. The institution, certainly you can't be sarcastic. You can't use satire. You can't use... Oh, you can use it, but with little subtleties and discretion. With that, you have to act more pensive. You have to operate on a more mature grad school crowd that has to shut their mouth and get ready to hear you speak your mind. It's no wonder when I look at guys on... that do talk about social issues, politics, or even anything of critical thinking. That word is thrown around too much. I don't think anything in my videos requires critical thinking, apart from dissecting what the fuck I'm actually talking about. But, certainly, you're gonna know who's the web personality and who's the guy that's probably spoken at university a lot more than in front of a webcam on YouTube. One's uniform, but the other is a lot more sweet, a lot more sugary, a lot more tasty. Built for the masses. It's kind of embarrassing to say, but I am built for the masses, because the masses can watch my videos, all they have to do is type up Mr. Wonka 7, see a bunch of videos in the search bar, and there you go. That's not to say that the elite go to these Ivy League schools, and, but, there is a bit more of a closed, culty vibe to it. And the Institute is a good example of something that I feel leans more towards being institutional. I mean, it is the Institute. And I find that a lot of the speakers and people inside of it, they're yes men. They're, the way they speak, the way they dress. They got that Robert Murphy guy who's 34, yet he looks like he's fucking 50. Well, at least last time I Wikipedia at him, he was 34. He's probably 35 now. But anyway, that's all I got to say, really. To wrap it up, professionalism is what makes the institutional thinker thrive. The institutional thinker can occupy the same mode of thoughts, philosophies, viewpoints, ideas, and principles of the social personality except the way he presents it and who he presents it to and in what location that's syntactically again I, I feel like that's not a word I should be using syntactically but it operates on that basis it, it operates syntactically towards this result where the social media personality the guy on TV who's trying to be funny, these little Fox News guys, these web douchebags, Ben Bernanke type fucks, and these YouTube Facebook dicks operate on another